Malina was targeted for being very attractive. Mozart was targeted for being talented and confident. Miss Mellon was targeted for knowing something that could get another person in trouble. Slim was targeted for refusing to accept and tolerate abusive behavior. Rosemary was targeted for being useful to a network's agenda. In this movie, two people are being targeted. One for being useful or for revenge on someone else and the other for the purpose of raising someone's social status. This movie isn't about gang stalking, but some elements are very similar. It's a good illustration of how the children of the SBP network could be and how they could interact with normal kids. It's also a good illustration of how psychopaths recruit and use people for their destructive campaigns. The movie starts with Sebastian talking to his therapist and feeling sorry for himself. The therapist doesn't seem to like him that much. He says that before, all he ever thought about was sex. Then he tells her she has nice legs and he would love to photograph them. But he catches himself and says that was the old him. He sees a picture of the therapist's daughter and says that he needs a girl like that. But the therapist says that the daughter is out of his league. Her daughter calls and she puts her daughter on hold until she finishes the session. When Sebastian leaves, she takes her daughter's call. Her daughter is upset and crying because a charming photographer she met told her he loved her, kept saying how she had nice legs and he would love to photograph them. He posted nude pictures of her on her mother's book, How to Raise the Perfect Child, but changed the title to How to Raise the Perfect Slut. The therapist remembers Sebastian making the same comment about her legs during their session. She is irate and runs out of the office to yell at Sebastian, who is downstairs. It seems that she lost it and had a meltdown. Sebastian smirks and plays innocent. He says to a bystander who's wondering what happened to the therapist that someone is in need of therapy, meaning the therapist. Then he tells the bystander she's beautiful and he's taking her to lunch and walks away holding hands probably while the therapist is still screaming and watching. The next scene shows Cecile and her mother, Mrs. Coldwell, meeting with Catherine, one of the most popular girls at school. Ms. Coldwell tells Catherine how she's an inspiration to the way Cecile was raised and tells her daughter to listen to Catherine and she'll go far. Ms. Coldwell asks Catherine how she does it and Catherine pulls out her cross on a necklace and says that she turns to God to help her fight the temptations of peer pressure. Cecile asks what the boys are like and her mother reprimands her. Miss Coldwell then complains about Sebastian, Catherine's stepbrother. Sebastian walks into the room and overhears the comment. The, he's rude to Miss Coldwell and she leaves with her daughter. Sebastian took the number that the bystander at the therapist's office, who he took out to lunch, gave him and throws it away from him in disgust. He complains about being tired of sleeping with the Manhattan debutantes because nothing shocks them anymore. Catherine's cross turns into a coke holder and she snorts some. Catherine says that she wants Sebastian to help her turn Cecile into a whore because the guy who dumped her in July is now dating Cecile. She doesn't want to attack her ex directly because it will be traced back to her, but she doesn't want that because everybody loves her and she wants to keep it that way. 
Sebastian considers the task too easy and wants to sleep with the new headmaster's daughter before school starts to boost his reputation. The headmaster's daughter wrote an article that appeared in Seventeen magazine stating why she's a virgin, will wait to have sex, and her boyfriend understands. Catherine thinks Sebastian is going out of his league and they make a bet. If she wins, she gets his vintage car. If he wins, she says that she'll sleep with him because she's the only girl he knows he'll never have. Catherine and Sebastian are psychopaths. Protect Life Now has a video called A Tale of Two Psychopaths, which gives another review of this movie in relation to gang stalking. Sebastian practically messed up his therapist's career as an author by using her daughter. Catherine wants to use Cecile to get revenge on her ex-boyfriend. Notice that both have direct targets but use indirect targets to hurt their real targets. Cecile and the therapist's daughter are the indirect targets. The indirect targets are not really involved in the conflict the psychopath has created towards the direct target. The indirect target could be on friendly terms with the psychopath. There might be attempts to bribe and sweet talk um, the indirect target to go against the direct target, but sometimes the indirect target will be deliberately hurt to get at the direct target. The therapist's daughter was taken advantage of and her reputation was ruined just to get at her mother. Cecile's reputation and character will be corrupted just to get at an ex-boyfriend. As said before, anyone can be targeted for any reason. The bystanders and audience feel a false sense of safety by staying on the psychopath's good side or staying out of it. But the truth is anytime that an audience member or bystander could be useful in hurting the target, they can become indirect targets. Sometimes it would be for petty acts like Sebastian flattering, taking the female bystander out to lunch and holding her hand as they walked away just to rub salt on the wound that he inflicted, inflicted on his therapist. He knew the therapist was watching the whole thing. However, other times the indirect targets will get hurt as in the case with Cecile and the therapist's daughter. This movie is a great illustration because it shows how the in, excuse me, it shows how the psychopaths directly go after the direct target in Sebastian's campaign and how they indirectly go after the direct target in Catherine's campaign. Catherine's ex-boyfriend is only seen once in the movie, although he is the direct target. This isn't an attempt to get the audience or bystanders to side with the, excuse me, to side against the SBP network. It's letting them know what is happening so that they could protect themselves. I was an audience member or a bystander before being forced into TI status. And I wish someone had told me or that I knew about the SBP network before all this happened. TIs have seen and heard and experienced things that probably would terrify most normal people. It's a 24-7 nightmare. TIs are forced to live out a real horror film. That's not an exaggeration. Most TIs wouldn't wish what they are going through on anyone. Most TIs don't know what will happen to them or what the SBP network will try next. So the ones who speak out about their experiences are doing so mainly to help prevent any more innocent people from being victimized by the SBP network. The next scene shows Annette, the headmaster's daughter, riding horses at Sebastian's aunt's house where she's staying on vacation. 
Sebastian arrives and is, and is introduced to Annette. He makes fun of her article saying that she criticized something she never experienced. And she explains she wasn't criticizing. She just thought that young people should be in real love before having sex. He continues to check her out and criticize her, but she shoots back with someone with his bad reputation not being able to understand. He acts shocked and makes it seem as if it isn't true. Annette is confused. The next scene shows Cecile getting music lessons and being hit on by her music teacher, but not knowing that Catherine is watching. Catherine interrupts and Ronald, the music teacher, ends the lesson. Sebastian is upset and wants to know who told Annette about his womanizing reputation. He talks to his homosexual friend who guesses that it is a football player that's in the closet but is messing around with him. Sebastian pays his friend to set up the football player for revenge purposes. Cecile and Catherine are hanging out when Catherine asks about the rumor that she is dating Catherine's ex. Cecile doesn't know that Catherine is the ex and says that he keeps talking about a bulimic head case he dumped over the 4th of July weekend. Catherine plays it off like it wasn't her and teaches Cecile how to kiss a boy. She tells Cecile to practice on Ronald, the music teacher, and Cecile confesses that she likes Ronald a lot. She says that Ronald writes her love letters and she hides them. Catherine tells Cecile to copy the letters and give her a copy so that she could help her write love letters back and maybe even arrange a get-together at her house. Catherine said that she would do it because she and Cecile are friends. Cecile gets excited and calls Catherine her best friend. Sebastian keeps ruthlessly hitting on Annette, although he knows she has a boyfriend. He buys her gifts and tries to seduce her. She is very resistant and turns him down. Sebastian's friend sets up the football player who is in the closet, and Sebastian takes pictures of the football player having a fling with the other guy. The football player is scared that people knowing about his same-sex fling would ruin his career and says that he wasn't the one who told Annette about Sebastian's bad reputation. Sebastian says that he'll keep the football player's fling a secret if the football player did him a favor. Sebastian tells the football player to say good things about him to Annette, tell her that the rumors about his bad reputation were false, and find out who told her about Sebastian's womanizing. The football player is friends with Annette and gets her to tell him who told her about Sebastian by swearing on his mother's life to keep it a secret. He tells Sebastian the same day and assures Sebastian that Annette bought the good things that the football player said about him. Catherine is busy trying to indirectly use Ronald to corrupt Cecile, but is frustrated that Ronald is being a gentleman and moving slowly. Since Sebastian found out it was Miss Coldwell, Cecile's mother, who told Annette about him. He wants to get revenge. Catherine gets Sebastian to help her sexually corrupt Cecile before Cecile's Labor Day trip with Catherine's ex ex boyfriend. The football player became a direct target when Sebastian thought he was the one who warned Annette about Sebastian. However, his role switched when it was clear that he wasn't the person who did it. Instead of apologizing or admitting to the mistake, Sebastian decided to use the innocent football player. 
Instead of keeping the flame quiet as an apology for Sebastian's offense against the football player, he decides to use it to exploit and force the football player to do what he wanted. Psychopaths rarely give apologies or admit to mistakes. They keep on lying, deceiving, and trying to use anything and everything as leverage over someone and get their way. The football player temporarily became a net handler and a member of the audience coerced with Smice. He wasn't an indirect target because he was kind of in on what was going on, although he didn't know the whole deal. He probably thought that Sebastian was just another guy going after a girl. He probably didn't realize that Sebastian wanted to use Annette to boost his reputation and win a bet. The football player handled Annette to help Sebastian's campaign. SMICE, or S-M-I-C-E, is an acronym for Sex, Money, Ideology, Contraband, Compromise, Coercion, Ego, Excitement, and Extortion. It's a recruitment method used commonly to get people to engage in or help spying or other covert activities. In this case, coercion and ego was used. The macho football player couldn't risk bruising his ego by coming out of the closet and was coerced by Sebastian to be Sebastian's puppet to save his football career. Sebastian is a puppet master. He used his gay friend to hook the football player. Once the football player was hooked, Sebastian could pull the strings and get the football player to do what he wanted. Sebastian's friend who set up the football player is part of Sebastian's street team against Annette and also a handler for the football player. He never directly interacted with Annette, but he knew what Sebastian was up to and helped him get to her. Sebastian also used Smice to enlist him on his campaign against Annette. This time he used money. Catherine is a puppet master. She used her undeserved but impeccable reputation to hook Cecile and Cecile's mother, Mrs. Coldwell. Mrs. Coldwell was unknowingly Catherine's handler for Cecile. Cecile is her puppet to get back at her ex-boyfriend. She probably would have used Cecile to indirectly cause fights and problems with her ex-boyfriend. She collaborated with her fellow puppet master, Sebastian, to corrupt Cecile, except Sebastian had his own reason for using Cecile for revenge, to get back at Cecile's mother for exposing him. Psychopaths don't like being exposed, so when attempting to do so, be prepared for a severe backlash and the lowest level tactics in the psychopath's quest for revenge. Know who they will directly and indirectly target in their revenge campaign. At first, most of their tactics will seem petty and covert to test the waters and see who they can use and what they can get away with. Usually when a psychopath is bold or overt, it's because she or he thinks they got you or have what they consider a steady advantage over the target. It could be real or part of the psychopath's delusion. The good news is that deception is a poor substitute for intelligence. Most psychopaths are charlatans or just idiots depending on deception. Luckily, you do not need to be a rocket scientist to neutralize a psychopath's deception. Ordinary and readily available common sense can easily neutralize deception. For the rare psychopath who has real intelligence, it can get tricky, but common sense can still help. There is something about psychopathic traits that degrades even the even the best and most intelligent people. Some psychopaths probably will watch this, so I can't spell out how to deal with them because they'll just work around it. 
Interacting with an unmasked psychopath is something that has to be directly experienced to understand. It's like dueling a mentally and emotionally disturbed barbaric beast. Most of the audience and bystanders will experience mass psychopaths, so expect to fall and be hurt until you start wising up to them and find ways to neutralize their tactics. This movie gives a sneak peek into the lives of psychopaths, so they will be more of the focus than TIs. Catherine follows through with her plans to tell Cecile's mother about Ronald's romantic advances so that the mother would get rid of him and Ronald and Cecile would have to depend on her and Sebastian to secretly see each other. It also gave her another controversial secret that could ruin Cecile's reputation and embarrass her ex-boyfriend. And it gave Sebastian something that could embarrass Mrs. Coldwell. After she tells Mrs. Coldwell, Mrs. Coldwell confronts, then fires Ronald. As Ronald is leaving the Coldwell's residence, Catherine and Sebastian are waiting for him. They invite him to their home where they give him love letters from Cecile and encourage him to write her back. They will make sure Cecile gets the letters and sends Ronald off to write the letters. Catherine gets ready to call Cecile, but Sebastian snatches the phone away from her. He wants them to really consider what they are about to do. Ruin an innocent girl. Catherine is determined to bring down her ex-boyfriend and if Sebastian doesn't help her, she'll find someone else. Sebastian is amazed at her. Catherine complains about having to act like Mrs. Sunshine all the time just to be considered a lady. And how it makes her want to kill herself sometimes. Sebastian and her ex could be promiscuous and it's fine, but if she does it, she's dumped for innocent virgins like Cecile. They call Cecile and have her sneak out of the house to see Sebastian so that he could help her write love letters to Ronald. He gets her drunk and coerces her into letting him perform oral sex on her by threatening to call her mother to come pick her up. Cecile tells Catherine the next day and Catherine downplays the seriousness of what happened by saying that Cecile was becoming a woman and encouraged her to use Sebastian as a tutor and sleep with as many guys as uh, possible. Cecile doesn't want to because she doesn't love Sebastian and doesn't want to be a slut. Catherine tells her that practicing on other guys would make her better at it and that everyone does it but keeps it a secret. Sebastian is spending more time with Annette and she is warming up to him. He is also sleeping with Cecile. When Catherine makes fun of Annette, Sebastian gets upset with her. Catherine teases that he is falling for her and he admits that he is. Catherine looks upset and seductively reminds him of the bet. He snaps back into trying to win the bet. He goes out and finds a way to kiss Annette. He acts like a frustrated lover and admits and gets her to admit that she has feelings for him. Sebastian kicks it into high gear doing a complete mind job on Annette. He hits her with every psychological punch he could find going back to what she said about waiting for love, scolding her for turning her back on her love for him, saying he's going away because he can't stand her playing games with him, and calling her a hypocrite because she seemed to write about cherishing love but is refusing her love for him. Annette falls for it and wants to sleep with him. He somehow can't seem to do it, apologizes, and leaves. 
Catherine uses a contrived dependence tactic by getting Ms. Caldwell to fire Ronald and forbid him from seeing Cecile. Ronald and Cecile are now dependent on her to see each other. She also has something she can use to hold over Cecile's head and pull her strings. To psychopaths, people are just objects to be manipulated as shown when Catherine just handed Cecile over to Sebastian to be used as a sex toy. Cecile wouldn't have slept with Sebastian if Catherine didn't tell her to. Catherine also ruined Miss Coldwell's relationship with her daughter by causing this rift. In another contrived dependence move, Cecile probably won't go to her mother for advice about boys or to get a second opinion. She is now dependent on Catherine for advice and guidance. Since Catherine already got Miss Coles got Miss Coldwell to give her stamp of approval. Cecile is less likely to question Catherine's advice. Ronald was dragged into the picture to be used to manipulate Cecile. Sebastian and Catherine are both handling Ronald. Cecile had healthy guidelines and attitudes towards sex, but Catherine and Sebastian degraded her. Sebastian did the same thing with Annette. Except she held on so strongly to her beliefs that he used them against her. In other words, he knew that she would only have sex with someone she loved, so he deceived her into thinking she loved him and could only prove it by having sex with him. He equated love and sex when they are not equal. It is possible to have sex without love and love without sex. Annette probably liked Sebastian, maybe even liked him a lot, but it is doubtful that she loved him so quickly. There is a song with a lyric that says, love was not meant, excuse me, love was not built for speed. It takes time, even with love at first sight. Love at first sight only works when it's a mutual sensation. If only one person thought it was love at first sight but the other didn't then it's not really love at first sight love at first sight is like getting the seed to a plant that you want to grow you know what you want and you know that it's what you want and you know how it's going to end up but you still have to water and nurture it to grow and for it to become what you expected. Sebastian never had to ask Annette, you know, Annette, will you have sex with me? That's because after getting her to equate love and sex and making it seem as if you can't have one without the other, he had to just deceive her into thinking that she loved him. Then he used her article against her by saying that she wrote that young people should wait for true love before having sex, yet she supposedly found true love with him and was a hypocrite because she wouldn't have sex with him. Listen up, girls. It sounds like a silly tactic, but many females of all ages have fallen for it. The technical term for this tactic is cognitive dissonance. It's a type of cognitive dissonance. Look it up and find out how Sebastian used a staple in the guy's getting laid handbook. Sometimes the campaign, recruitment, and inside workings of a campaign against a target is more interesting than executing the final plans against the target. As a TI, sometimes I wonder who is really the show? The TI or the SBP members? It seems as if 
a puppet master would have more fun controlling and playing their handlers and street teams than getting to the TI. So much drama with the psychopaths. When the SBT, when the, when the SBP network is exposed, there will be so many horrifying and completely disturbing stories. But there will also be some completely ridiculous and even comical behind the scenes stories as well. Catherine comes in the next morning and asks what happened. Sebastian admits that he passed up the chance to sleep with Annette. Catherine calls him a chump, tells him Annette left and pushes his buttons until he goes after Annette. Sebastian calls the football player to find out where Annette is headed. The football player asks why he doesn't leave Annette alone and Sebastian demands to know where she is headed. The football player tells him. Sebastian finds Annette and sleeps with her. The next day he overhears Catherine having sex and finds out that she slept with Ronald. Catherine is ready to pay her part of the bet but Sebastian isn't in the mood. Catherine overhears Sebastian telling Annette that he loves her. She gets jealous and threatens to tell the new headmaster about Sebastian's reputation, knowing that it will cause the headmaster to forbid the relationship. Sebastian doesn't care and was going to tell Annette everything the next day. He decides against it and breaks up with Annette in a cruel way. Sebastian messes up Catherine's fling with Ronald by arranging for Ronald to be with Cecile. He bought champagne for them, him and Catherine, to celebrate. He asks Catherine what they should toast to and she says to her triumph. Sebastian said it was her triumph over Annette. She laughs and says no. Her triumph was over Sebastian because she made him mess up his first true love because she threatened his reputation. She tells him that, she, that he's just a toy that she plays with. Cecile was isolated from her mother by Catherine's contrived dependence tactic. It helped Catherine wield more control over her puppet, Cecile, whom she would use later to handle her ex-boyfriend. Some psychopaths start young, and if they have relatives who are SBP members, they are born into it and trained in the network's method before they are even potty trained. Normal kids, be careful around psychopathic kids because they'll ruin people's lives for fun. Normal people, good luck trying to speak like adults or getting a psychopathic parent to stop their child's psychopathic behavior if your child is a target. They'll laugh it off, do nothing, give excuses or insincere apologies, and or even target the normal parent. Similar to Catherine, some psychopaths have an impeccable reputation that they can't really live up to and probably don't deserve. So don't just look at people with bad reputations and think they're the main psychopaths. Catherine is a masked psychopath. Sebastian was probably the only one who saw her without her mask. This isn't saying that all masks are bad. Sometimes people wear masks in certain situations. Sometimes it's protective. What's behind the mask is what could be dangerous. Psychopaths don't use masks just for protection. They use it as a weapon. 
Psychopaths will use almost anything as a weapon as long as it gives them an unfair advantage over others. Sebastian was an unmasked psychopath who deserved and glorified his bad reputation. However, the player got played. He really loved Catherine and he chose Catherine over Annette. Catherine was his first love because they were cut from the same cloth. She knew he loved her and could be seen playing with him throughout the whole movie. Sebastian thought she was flirting or playing hard to get. However, when he admitted his feelings for her, she played him like he did his conquests. That's when he ran back to Annette after Catherine rejected him. He probably did have strong feelings for Annette, but he was more comfortable with Catherine. Catherine and Sebastian were both puppet masters, but it turned out that Catherine was also handling Sebastian so that he could do her dirty work. A psychopath is only loyal to him or herself. Catherine was afraid of ruining her impeccable reputation, although she was a complete hypocrite. Her reputation was her most prized possession. Karma got her and Sebastian. Sebastian played with people's emotions and betrayed their trust for fun, and the same was done to him. Catherine ruined innocent people's lives for fun and even messed up Sebastian's first chance at real love. So, karma hit her where it hurt. She probably experienced the same level of pain, loss, and suffering she caused others at the time karma got her. The movie was a basic behind-the-scenes behind look at the SBP network or a look at how the SBP network is probably or possibly operated at some level. It's probably uglier and dirtier than this because, but it gives a general idea. You know, I don't even want to get into how their operation is probably operated, but you know, in time that will come out. Someone may say that these are just kids messing around, but many TIs have noted the immaturity of the SBP members, so this illustration is probably close enough to be useful from a child to the adult levels of the SBP network. The SBP network is ruthless and dangerous. Many of the members are psychopaths, or heavily influenced and controlled by psychopaths. Hopefully, audience members, bystanders, and TIs will get a better idea of the SBP network and their activities against innocent people. It's theories, but the truth will come out when the network is seriously investigated and something is done to prevent any further victimization.